You cite a tired brain, foggy thinking, as the reason to stop answering questions or giving a talk. How do you combat this while working or writing daily? Um, well, I eat a big breakfast relatively soon on waking. That really helps. If any of you out there are anxious, and many of you no doubt are, there'll be a large number of you who are anxious and don't eat breakfast. And there'll be a whole bunch of you out there who think, well, I don't eat breakfast. It isn't necessary. It's like, that's wrong. It's necessary. You fasted all night. If you load yourself cognitively or physiologically in the morning, your brain stress will produce, um, will encourage your body to produce insulin. It will take all the blood sugar out of your blood and then you're done for the day. And then you'll be anxious. And another, a lot of the rest of you too, you'll find if you're anxious, try this. It's really, really interesting um, experiment. The next time you're anxious, go eat something. Eat, like, uh, eat some protein and fat would be best. You could have cheese and crackers. I'm not a big fan of carbohydrates, but whatever. Eat whatever you're willing to eat, but make it solid. Don't eat a peanut butter or don't eat a, like a chocolate bar or something sweet. Eat something substantial, a piece of meat, a piece of cheese, some peanut butter, something like that. And then wait 10 minutes and see if you're less anxious. And try that for like two weeks. Every time you get anxious, eat something. Because then you can find out if your anxiousness, if your anxiety is linked to low blood sugar. And it's very likely that it is, especially if you also get irritable and foggy in your thinking. And so, and the best way to treat that, as far as I've been able to tell, and there's a decent literature on this, is to make sure that you eat a big breakfast. And you might say, well, I'm not hungry in the morning. It's like, who the hell cares if you're hungry? I didn't say enjoy your breakfast. I said eat it. That's not the same thing. You know, there's lots of things that you need to do that you don't enjoy to begin with. You'll get hungry in six months and then you'll start to enjoy it. So that's a massive difference. I take small naps quite frequently. If I'm wiped out, you know, I'll go have a nap for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then that helps quite a lot. Um, I try to wake up fairly regular uh, on a fairly regular schedule that's another thing i would really recommend for people whose lives are in disarray and who are anxious try to s fix your wake time sleep going when you sleep that's not so important so you can still you know stay up late and have fun and all that but getting up in the morning is really helpful so um you know and you you also have to figure out how much you can work or write i can't write for more than about max my sustainable maximum for writing is three hours a day. And if I push it past that, then especially if I'm editing, I, I make mistakes when I'm editing, so that's counterproductive, and I can't sustain it across time. And so I don't really think you can do more than about three hours of extremely intense intellectual work a day. Although if you have a nap, you can stretch that, but I think at least I end up paying for it across time. So nap, make sure you eat. Um, and make sure you eat protein and fat and not carbohydrates because carbohydrates are basically poisonous. Um, that's about, that's about, and make sure that you get enough sleep. So that's, that's how I combat it and try to make myself hyper efficient, which is also a really interesting thing to try. You know, I was talking to my agents at CAA, Creative Artists Agency in LA, and I just hired a publicist too, to help me manage media in a more intelligent manner. And we're trying to think about our overarching philosophy, you know. And I per first proposed to the CAA guys that our overarching philosophy would be something like, because you need an overarching philosophy under which you nest all your specific actions. It was something like to educate as many people as possible in the shortest period of time. It seems like a really good goal. Like, why the hell not do that? But then we broadened that a little bit this week, which was to try to do as much good possible as efficiently as possible. And that efficiency thing is really fun if you guys who are listening are out for a challenge. Like one of the things that you can, I think this heightens the meaning in your life is to try to do difficult things, right? Aim high. Don't aim so damn high you can't manage it and make sure you break down your aims into reasonably attainable sub goals, but you want to aim high and then you want to see how hyper efficient you can get. That's a great thing to do in your early 20s is to see, okay, like discipline yourself, Think, okay, how much work can I do if I load myself right to the maximum? How far do I, how far can I work? How hard can I work until I exhaust myself? And then you back off, obviously, because the optimal amount of working, productive engagement, let's say, is that which is sustainable across decades. So you have to, you have to learn that, but you don't learn that without stretching yourself to your limits to begin with. And, you know, if your life isn't everything it could be, and if you're suffering from an excess of meaninglessness, 
Well, it means you're not oriented in the world of chaos and order properly. It's like you could learn to discipline yourself. Look, figure out what, figure out what it is that you need to do and that you want to do and then see how efficient you can get. Because one of the things that's quite fun is to figure out if you have a task, I always tell my graduate students this, if they're doing an experiment too, if you have a task that you have to do, it's really interesting to spend a few minutes, sometimes hours, depending on how long the task is, see if you can figure out how to do it from, from five to 10 times faster. It means you'll have to rearrange the way you think about it, but you can often do it. And that's how extremely productive people get so hyper efficient. You know, sometimes it means you have to delegate. It means sometimes it means you have to bring other people aboard. That's delegation as well, I suppose. Um, but there's a lot of preconceptions that you hold about who you are and who the world is that you could dispense with that would make you a way more efficient actor in the world. And so, all right, so there, that's that. Hi guys, and thanks for watching the video today. If you enjoyed Jordan's tips on how to become hyper efficient, we've broken them all down, the same tips in this video, into an easy to digest checklist that you can download for free by clicking in the description below the video. So go ahead and click that if you want to be hyper productive. If you don't, enjoy the next video.